What's up, I'm Vin, and today I wanna to show how to determine if a piecewise function is differentiable. So these are the three examples we're gonna go through. Here are some notes to help us out, and let's get started. Okay, for this first question here, I'm gonna go through this three different ways so that all the strategies are met. But the easiest way to do this is to just sketch it out. An absolute value of x minus four has that classic V shape, and there's a sharp turn at x equals four, which tells me right away that this function is not differentiable at x equals four. Okay, but then let's say for some reason that graphing this is not an option. The function's too complicated, you're not allowed to use a calculator. So then an alternate way of looking at this is to use this definition of absolute value x, that absolute value x is equal to the square root of x squared. And this will help you remember how to do the derivative of absolute value x. So when I rewrite this function like this, square root of x minus four squared, which I could now call x minus four squared, and then this whole thing to the one half power, I'm gonna take the derivative of this using chain rule. So then I would have one half times x minus four squared and this whole thing to the negative one half now. But now the derivative of the inside is two times x minus four to the first power and the derivative of the inside is one so I could skip that chain rule for the last step. And then this simplifies pretty nice. I have one half and two canceling. And then I could rewrite this now as x minus four over, and now x minus four squared to the negative one half I could send down here, and I could throw this radical back on. But once again, this is just the definition of absolute value. So the derivative of absolute value x minus four is actually x minus four over absolute value x minus four. So one thing to comment on is that the original function f of x, the domain, is all real numbers. But now when we investigate the domain of f prime, so the domain of f prime, we could just look at this here and which values of x are forbidden, any values of x that would make the denominator equal to zero. So the only value that would make the denominator zero would be four. So that's our restriction, which also supports that f is not differentiable at x equals four. Now, the last way to do this is arguably the most complicated. This is the limit definition. So option three would be to find the limit as x approaches four of f of x minus f of four over x minus four. And to do this, we have to know first that f of four is equal to zero. So this is already given to us. And then when we substitute into this formula for differentiability, and we go through it this way, f of x is absolute value x minus four, we would have minus zero over x minus four. Now, if I wanted to be super rigorous with this, I would find the left side and right side limits, but I'm just gonna kind of do the expedited version. And we'll see here that the slope on the right side of this vertex is one, and the slope on the left side of this vertex is negative one. So that's one way of saying right away that this limit does not exist. So this limit does not exist because the left side limit, I promise you, is gonna work out to negative one, and the right side limit is gonna work out to positive one. So since this limit does not exist, this would also tell us that f is not differentiable at x equals four. Now for this next question here, we're just gonna go straight forward, and we're gonna first show that this thing is continuous, then we're gonna show it's differentiable. So to show that it's continuous first, we're gonna look at the left side limit. And the left side limit, we're doing the limit as x approaches two from the left side of g of x. And when we evaluate this, we're gonna have four times two, which is equal to eight. And we're going with the top portion of this function because when x is less than or equal to two, that's when we're on the left side of g of x at x equals two. So when we wanna find what is the right side limit at x equals two, then we're gonna use the bottom part of this piecewise function. So now we're looking for the limit as x approaches two from the right of g of x. And this is gonna be equal to two squared plus four, which is also equal to eight. So this is really good for us because now we could say that the limit as x approaches two in general of g of x is equal to eight. And what we also have here, we could all say in the same line, is that g of two, the function value of g at x equals two, is equal to eight when we substitute in two to the four times two component. So what this tells us, this tells us that the limit as x approaches two of g of x is equal to g of two. And what we can say here 
g of x is continuous at x equals 2. So now that we've established that it's continuous, let's go ahead and see if this thing is actually differentiable. So what we do to start this, to determine if this thing is differentiable or not, is we're going to look at the derivative of this piecewise function term by term. So we start with the, the top portion. For x, the derivative is 4. And this is for when x is less than 2. Notice I didn't put the equal to because we don't know if it's differentiable just yet. And now when I take the derivative of x squared plus 4, that's going to be 2x for when x is greater than 2. So now we're going to use this information and the same strategy for continuity to determine if this is differentiable or not. So when we look at the left side, the limit as x approaches 2 from the left side of g prime of x, we're going to use this portion here when x is less than 2. And since there's no x to plug in for, this is just going to be 4. When we find the right side limit, we're doing the limit as x approaches 2 from the right side of g prime of x. And when we plug in 2 to this portion, we have 2 times 2. Once again, we're to the right of 2, so we're going with x greater than 2. This also gives us 4. So what we have is now we could say that the limit as x approaches 2 in general of g prime is equal to 4. And since we already showed that it's continuous, now we can say here, Therefore, g of x is differentiable at x equals 2. Now, one thing you just have to be careful with, if we had just rushed ahead to this step, you could definitely run into some trouble. So just make sure that you do take the time to check that it's continuous first. Okay, for this last question, we're going to show why you don't just jump right into the differentiable step. So let's say a student that just kind of rushes through this looks at this question and says, all right, h prime of x and they just go ahead and find the derivative of each piece. They say it's 1 half when x is less than 1, and it's 1 half x to the negative 1 half when x is just greater than 1. So when they get to this step here, let's say they do exactly what we did in the last question. They do the limit as x approaches 1 from the left side of h prime, and for the left side limit, when x is less than 1, there's no x to plug in for, so it's just 1 half. But for the right side limit, we can plug in. Now we have the limit as x approaches 1 from the right side of h prime. And this is going to be 1 half times 1 to the negative 1 half, which is also equal to a half. So a student that does this is, might just say, oh, wow, this is differentiable. But you're walking into a very, very dangerous trap. This function is actually not differentiable at x equals 1. The reason being is first we have to investigate continuity. So forget about what we just did here. This is no good for us. We have to check to see if it's continuous first. So when we check the left side limit, the limit as x approaches 1 from the left side of just h of x is equal to 1 half times 1, which is equal to a half. We're just using this function here. Now when we find the right side limit, so for the right side limit, we have the limit as x approaches 1 from the right side of h of x. And this is equal to square root 1 minus 1. Now we're using this portion of the function. And this is equal to 0. So right away, your like alarm bells should be going off. The left and right limits are not equal. So what this tells us, that the limit as x approaches 1 of h of x does not exist. Okay, if you got to write a little explanation of why, the left and right limits are not equal. Okay, if you want to say that first, that the left and right limits are not equal, therefore the limit does not exist, that's fine. But we are, we're showing our work here, so this is okay. So what that tells you is that h, h of x is not continuous at x equals x equals 1. The reason being, the limit doesn't exist. Remember, there's three conditions for continuity. The limit has to exist, the function has to be defined, and the limit and function value have to be equal. So now we could say h of x is not continuous, but remember that point I had in the notes before. Since h of x, so since h of x is not continuous at x equals 1, it's automatically disqualified from being differentiable. 
Okay, well, this is going to conclude this video on determining if piecewise functions are differentiable. If you found this video to be helpful, please click the like and subscribe buttons below. It really helps me grow the channel. And if you've got any requests, just leave the topics in the comments section. And thank you for watching.